I think for a lot of us, especially those that have been wrestling fans for a long period of time, I'm talking probably longer than 15, 20 years, you have those things that you look back on with wrestling that are long since gone, probably never going to get again, and there's both that feeling of nostalgia for how much you enjoyed it, but also that reality of how much you miss it and how much you wish you could have it again, but probably never could. Which brings me to the topic for today's video as part of this 12 Days of OTR Central Christmas. The seven things I miss most about professional wrestling. Uh, you can certainly chime in with what you miss most about professional wrestling uh, from the past compared to now. Let me know that in the comments section. And make sure you smash that subscribe button. Let's have some fun here, shall we? Okay. So from 7 to 1, what are the 7 things that I miss most about professional wrestling? Number 7, legit managers. Legit managers. The Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart's. The Paul Bears. The James E. Cornettes of the world. The Bobby the Brain Heenans. The Mr. Fuji's. And I could go on and on and on. The precious Paul Ellerings. The J.J. Dillons, like, you could just go throughout wrestling history. And one of the parts of the act were the managers that could get heat. The managers that could sit there and help elevate their talent and get more out of their talent. The managers that could be the talking piece, that could be the mouthpiece, that could help add extra. We just don't get that in wrestling anymore. I blame WWE a lot for that. You know, similar to tag team wrestling where Vince just doesn't see the value in it and he's really diminished the importance and meaning of it. Uh, it is really permeated throughout the rest of professional wrestling. And sure, you get those fluke situations where here and there you get a manager, but it's not the same. And I miss the days of having those really true elite managers, those real heat seekers, those guys that could really add something to the people that they worked with to get the most out of them that could really add something at key moments in times in the middle of a feud. Uh, so that's number seven. Number six, I miss being able to look at Hulk Hogan as a hero. And this has nothing to do with politics crap. This has nothing to do with, you know, the business politics. It has nothing to do with any of that. Because many of the people that have always cracked on Hogan for things like backstage politics... Uh, Brett was a whiny bitch. Sean was a whiny bitch. Uh, let's not even talk about the Breakfast Club. And Stone Cold was every bit as much of a mark for himself as Hogan was. So they're going to be started. Right? But, you know, Hogan was somebody that was the reason I got into professional wrestling. He's the reason I stayed a professional wrestling fan for many years. So many things happened in my life as a direct result of Hulk Hogan being in professional wrestling and him being my favorite wrestler. And now you found out later in life that he's probably been a raging D-bag of a prejudicial racist cuck fuck for probably his whole life. And it sucks. Because they used to be part of my shtick on here, part of the appeal on here, brother. And I just can't do that anymore. So yeah, admittedly, I miss the days where I could come on here and be a raging Hogan mark and not have that cause all types of great concerns and questions about me and what I stand for and I believe in. You know? God, that pisses me off. <laughs> but it is what it is. I can't control it. You stay around too long as a hero, you live to become the villain. Or they also say... You know, you don't ever want to meet your heroes because you might be disappointed. Well, this was certainly a case for me of being disappointed. And uh, I miss when I could have fun talking about Hulk Hogan and the memories and the legacy and the accomplishments. I just can't do that anymore. Uh, number five, great storytelling. This should go without saying. It is so glaringly obvious in professional wrestling today how poor so many storytelling elements are. You know, depending on the company, it could be... Uh, that the heels never actually get any heat, and the baby faces just always have to go over. To the insistence on having consistent 50-50 booking and matches where no everybody's got to get their shit in and nobody really gets over. You know, where are those great stories in professional wrestling that get us emotionally invested? Where are those great stories 
that suck you in, that make you forget about the rest of the world, that make you forget that this is scripted entertainment, that really, truly suck you in. Because the whole notion of, well, wrestling's fake, like, these are the same idiots that say that crap that are going on Twitter and talking about Game of Thrones and what happened, and The Mandalorian, and The Walking Dead, and, like, they're disconnected from reality with that crap. Why? Because of storytelling, the viewers, the audience get sucked into the story. And we don't have that anymore. It doesn't matter if it's fucking fake. It always has been. It's like most things are not real. Right? So what's the difference? The difference is you don't have those great stories anymore. You don't have those stories that play out for a long period of time. I always go back to a great story being... You know, Sting in 1997 and his kind of change to being Crow Sting and descending from the rafters and spending basically a whole year going through the NWO to get to Hogan. Like, you know, the end of that story kind of sucked, but the build up to it was math, massive and magnificent. You can, you can look back throughout the history of WWF and you see, you know, the storytelling in terms of characters and how their arcs change and how they grow and develop and shift as the years go by and you just don't get that anymore it's just hey we're gonna throw this guy or gal into this spot you better accept it and i miss the days of that great storytelling like the two plus years that really went into the building up on the destruction of the mega powers i mean that was a thing man and when the mega powers exploded like that was the building block for wrestlemania 5 where was that long-term storytelling in today's professional wrestling? Gone. Probably never to return. Number four, this should be obvious, WCW and ECW. It's been two decades almost now. And yeah, you got to let it go at some point. But that doesn't mean you don't miss them. Like, I miss the days that I could sit there and say, Hey, I don't like this Raw segment. It sucks. I'm going to flip over to Nitro. I miss the days where I could watch ECW on TNN. Like, I miss all of that stuff. Like, the, the days where I could watch three wrestling shows and be entertained by all of them. A time where professional wrestling almost ruined Monday Night Football, not the other way around. I cannot tell you how much fun these times were. And for those that are wrestling fans now that did not live it, that did not experience it, you think you know, but you don't know. That's not your fault. It's just hard for, for you to even be able to begin to grasp just how much different it used to be. You can go back and watch and get a feel for it in a sense of it. You know, but back then, man, to be able to have three viable, legitimate national shows, I miss those days. And I think the business certainly misses those days. Uh, number three, mega stars and larger than life characters. I think this goes without saying. You know, especially with WWE, Vince McMahon made a decision after Austin and Rock and then Lesnar leaving after WrestleMania 20 to go play foosball, uh, that he wasn't going to build massive stars anymore. He wasn't going to try and make anybody bigger than the brand. He was going to try and make the brand the number one star, which is a safer play and a sensible play at that time to a certain degree. But you're in the entertainment business. Star power matters. Stars are what sell, not your brand. And that's part of the reason why WWE is in such a bad way today. Because they tried to sell the brand instead of the individual star. The brand can be great, but you have to have the individual stars. And we don't have that anymore. And I just miss you know, how you used to get the larger-than-life personalities, the real characters, those guys and gals even. That you would sit there and be like, you know what, they're cool, and they're badass, and that's somebody that I wish I could be like. Now you sit there and watch wrestling and you say, oh, I'm just like them. Yeah, that fucking sucks. Why would I want to watch <laughs> a television extension of my own depressing reality? Like, who wants to do that? You know, guys sit there and just bump around and flop around and do a bunch of crap because everybody's got to get the crap in because nobody ever bothered to actually learn how to really, truly get over in a meaningful way. 
You know, whereas it used to be you could sit there and come out, cut a promo, and do a flex and a move, and you'd pop the people like crazy. I miss when we had wrestlers that were really, truly stars, that were larger-than-life characters, that led to those can't-miss, must-see TV moments that you got from the Austins and the Rocks of the world and the Hogans and the Warriors and the Savages and the Andres of the world, the NWO and Goldberg and Stig, and I could go on and F and on. And now I'm supposed to sit there and accept these lame-ass, one-dimensional, vanilla midget spot monkeys and think that that's okay. No, it sucks. And shame on any of you that allowed that to permeate through professional wrestling. I miss managers, or excuse me, megastars and larger life characters. I also miss managers. I miss a lot of things about wrestling. Number two, I miss when it was real. Not just from a, as a young, young kid thinking that it was real, you know, because you figure out very early that it's not. But even once you do, like, you're still able to suspend that disbelief and you're still able to pretend it is real. I miss that. And it's easy to blame the internet, it's easy to blame a lot of things, but the reality is, is wrestling is just not that good anymore. So, it doesn't matter what goes on in the internet, it doesn't matter what goes on with the spoilers, it doesn't matter what goes on with this or that, or the other thing. Like, this is the wrestling business's fault. You know, telling all the secrets, putting all that crap out there on the internet because, oh, we protect the business, but now that we can make a little money off of shoot interviews, a <laughs> kayfabe can kiss it. I get, I understand, but I really miss the days where you could pretend wrestling was real. And you could even lie to yourself and pretend it was real. It at least felt real. You could believe everything that happens. Now, too often in wrestling, you get into a tag match and you got seven guys standing around in circle looking like fucking idiots waiting for jackass number eight to jump over the ring so that way they could all catch them. Because, my God, that's a spectacular-looking spot, right? <laughs> Who the hell wants to see that? I miss the day of when you had believable characters and believable stories, or at least relatable stories, or at least entertaining stories, where you could emotionally invest yourself to the point where it felt like it was real, even though you knew the whole time it wasn't. I really, really miss that. But number one thing, though, that I miss about pro wrestling is being able to watch with friends. Wrestling viewing on your own can be okay. I've done the best I could with that over the years, and certainly over the past several years. But wrestling is always best enjoyed with a group. Wrestling is always best enjoyed with friends. And I think like some other sports, that may not be the case. Like football, I prefer to watch alone. Basketball, I prefer to watch alone. But wrestling, wrestling is always better when you got a group of friends that you could watch it with. It absolutely is. I guess that's how I ever started doing this stuff I hear on YouTube. It's because of watching wrestling with friends. You know, that's how I was able to maintain interest in wrestling over the years. It was because of watching it with different groups of pockets of friends over the years. And I can certainly speak to myself. Ever since I moved out here to Virginia in the summer of 2013, wrestling's never truly been the same because I don't have that same pocket of great friends to watch wrestling with every week. Because it wasn't just about watching wrestling. It was about hanging out with the guys and bitching about the ladies and, you know, all of that. It was a chance to be kids again. So there's one thing that I could point to that I miss about pro wrestling more than everything else. You know, yeah, it pisses me off to this day that Hulk Hogan's a racist. Because that ruins a lot of things. Makes me question a lot of things. I miss the great characters, the personalities. I miss the storytelling. I miss WCW and ECW. I miss the days we had legit managers. Hell, I'll throw in there the days that we had great tag team divisions. I miss the feeling of it being real. But the number one single most important thing that I miss above all else is being able to watch wrestling with friends. Because, man, that makes all the difference in the world. It really does. So if you're lucky enough to be able to watch wrestling with friends, don't ever lose that! Don't ever lose that! And if you don't have any friends that you watch wrestling with, utilize the technology available if you don't have any friends in your local area. Find people that you can watch wrestling with. I promise you, it will enhance your viewing experience. It makes all the difference in the world. So there you have it. My seven things that I miss most about professional wrestling. Again, let me know in the comments. What things you miss most about pro wrestling? Smash that subscribe button. Click the bell. What the hell? So that way you're notified of future videos. The next video in this series, 
The six things AEW must improve in 2021. I'm sure it's going to piss off some of you. I love it and look forward to it.